do it any justice. The first thing you'll notice is just how tiny the bezels are all around and Samsung is calling it the infinity display. It's just ridiculous. It's for sure one of the nicest screens that I've ever seen on a phone period. It's super AMOLED so the colors are vibrant, the blacks are awesome and this is an HDR compatible display so you'll be able to enjoy HDR content from Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. The aspect ratio is 2 to 1, similar to the LG G6, and that's why the phone is taller, but even with a slightly larger 5.8 inch display on the Galaxy S8, the LG G6 feels chunkier and less elegant when you're holding it. Both great phones though, so if you want to see a full comparison of these two, let me know in the comment section below. There is a larger model announced and that is the Galaxy S8 Plus which has a whopping 6.2 inch display but what's funny is that it's not much bigger than the iPhone 7 Plus with a much smaller 5.5 inch display and the iPhone is much wider. The S8 Plus really impressed me because it does not feel that large in your hands. I prefer the rounded update to the design for I think it looks a lot better. The Galaxy S7 here might be the last flat display that we see on a flagship from Samsung and the S7 Edge and the S8 Plus aren't too far off in terms of size so Samsung really nailed it here on the design. Of course the glass back has its ups and downs and the great thing about it is is that it supports fast wireless charging but the glass is slippery, is a fingerprint magnet and durability can be an issue with drops and scratches even though it's Gorilla Glass 5 but I'll probably just put a dbrand skin on it like I did here with my Galaxy S7 so I will leave a link down below for you if you want to pick one up for your S8. There's not much to complain about here since we get the same flagship type features that we would expect like IP68 water resistance, micro SD card expansion, USB type C with quick charge but my one gripe is where they place this fingerprint scanner. They put it right next to the camera on the back and I can see this being very hard to reach and I can see a lot of smudge camera shots in the future with this placement. I'm not sure why they did this but it looks like they're pushing people towards the iris scanning and facial recognition for unlocking. Maybe next time we'll see a fingerprint scanner embedded in the display right here on the virtual home button area. That would have been cool. Even though they remove that home button, you still get haptic feedback when you press it and if you press it a little harder, it feels like the entire display is clicking. It's kind of weird but it feels a bit like force touch on the iPhone. There are a few new software features that are interesting on both the S8 and the S8 Plus. The first thing is that the interface is cleaned up and the look of the software matches the futuristic design and I'm digging it. If you just swipe up, you enter the app drawer and then if you swipe down again, it closes it. It feels fast and fluid thanks to its new Snapdragon 835 processor with 4GB of RAM or the Exynos 8895 depending on where you live. There's a dedicated button now on the left hand side that is for the new AI assistant called Bixby. It's even integrated into the camera app to scan whatever you're looking at to give you shopping results. It can learn what you do and what you like over time so it will give you suggested feeds and reminders on a separate page. I'm not sure why they would include this along with Google Assistant but Samsung says it can do a lot more so I can't wait to try this when I get this phone in a couple of days. My favorite shortcut to the camera still exists but now you have to double press the power button. It's got that same 12 megapixel camera that we've seen before. Nice and fast shutter and I'm sure this will produce some crazy nice photos. The front facing 8 megapixel camera gets some autofocus improvements and you get some fun snapchat like filters built right in. I can see some tweens loving this feature and it could be fun. What do you guys think? I can't see myself using this. The S8 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and the S8 Plus has a 3500 milliamp hour battery so I hope that is enough to get through a full day but there is a choice to drop the resolution to 1080p or below and that's nice so you can get better battery life. I'll be sure to test all this and let you know so stay tuned for the full review. Samsung also released a lot of accessories including the new fast wireless chargers, a brand new Gear VR with remote. But the most interesting accessory was the deck stock where this cool puck like stand can hold your Galaxy S8 while charging it and turn it into a Android desktop computer and also giving you all kinds of ports to go along with it. I can't wait to try one of these. With the incredible looking display, the horsepower, the camera, wireless charging, water resistance, the new AI assistant and one of the most beautiful designs that I've ever seen on a mobile device, I think this could be the phone of the year. I love the Galaxy Note 7 so I feel like this is an improved version of the Note 7 hopefully without the explosions and I can't wait to start using this as my daily driver. 
Let me know what you guys think of the S8 and S8 Plus in the comment section below. Smack that like button for more coverage of these two phones and let me know what you want to see in the future videos with the S8 and I will see you guys in the next video.